Hello, 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 and welcome to another Angry Unit of the Reek. And today we're taking a look at the I-153 anti-tank aircraft. The I-153 was a Soviet biplane fighter which would enter into service in 1939 and would be in production all the way to 1941 with just over 3,000 models being produced. It was meant to be a successor to the I-15, as after the Spanish Civil War and seeing the experiences there of the I-15 fighting Italian biplanes, which were much more agile, the Soviets needed to step up their game. The I-153 was intended to be the successor to the I-15, as it had a more powerful engine and faster firing machine guns, as well as a new ring design. It first see action during the Battle of Karkin Go against the Japanese in 1939 and then against the Finns in the Winter War later that year, to rather middling results. When Operation Barbarossa started, around about a third of Soviet aircraft on the Western Front, of Russia that is, was these I-153s, and the majority of them would end up being shot down during the initial months of the operation, as well the age of the biplane was pretty much over by 1941, and monoplane fighters were really a new thing that was in. Later on in the war for the Soviets, the I-153 would end up seeing more of a secondary role as more advanced monoplane fighters would end up replacing it. However, for the Finns, they managed to capture a few during the Winter War and also brought some from the Germans, which they managed to capture, and around about 20 of these aircraft would be in the Finnish Air Force. In game, the I-153 is a 70-point anti-tank or tank buster aircraft available exclusively to the Finnish Rimerapana division. And well, it has two weapons. So the weapon loadout is pretty straightforward. You have eight anti-tank, yo, oh, they could also be anti-infantry rockets. 82mm, they're pretty standard anti-tank rockets. Not as high caliber compared to some other runs, but still, you can blow tanks up with them. And then you got four just 7.62mm machine guns. Nothing really too crazy in the machine gun firepower. Hop down to the miscellaneous stat, it goes 405 kilometers, has normal optics, medium agility, but once you drop off the payload, I believe it goes up to good agility and very bad resilience. In battle, the I-153 is surprisingly a pretty competent aircraft for the price and for it being a biplane. Of course, it's not the greatest aircraft frame in the world in a world war where you have Messerschmitts, Pitsfires, Mustangs, and Lags. You are a little bit outclassed and outgunned with this aircraft, but your job isn't to go and fight down aircraft, unless you buy the fighter version of this, which isn't entirely great. Only having four machine guns to try and shoot down an enemy plane is just not going to cut it. Maybe in World War One, but here, not so much. No, your job is to blow up tanks. This is a tank buster aircraft. And for 70 points, it's a really cheap tank buster aircraft and a pretty effective one because, yes, the airframe is not great, but it still has a rather respectable anti-tank loadout of eight 82mm rockets. Not the highest explosive or highest anti-tank payload of an anti-tank aircraft, but it is still enough to actually blow up tanks and surprisingly... In terms of knocking out light and medium tanks, the I-153 is pretty effective at it. It usually only takes one, maybe two anti-tank runs to blow up a T-34-76, which is pretty good considering you're only spending 70 points for this aircraft. It's much cheaper compared to buying other regular aircraft for the anti-tank role, and that's just because it's a crappy little biplane. But also, what makes this aircraft really good is that you get it in A phase. You can get it in B and C phase, but that's not a very good idea. It's going to be too much anti-air and airplanes in the sky to make flying this thing a little bit dangerous. But in A phase, where there's barely any anti-aircraft guns or enemy fighter planes in the air, you have a bit more free reign to fly around and blow stuff up. The low speed does allow you to line up your targets pretty efficiently, and if you can get a good side shot, you can definitely do a lot more damage than just, you know, blindly shooting at the front of the tank. And that is definitely something you want to try and do, especially against more heavily armoured foes. You aren't really going to be blowing up IS-2s with this aircraft all that often, but it's still a possibility if you just shoot enough bloody rockets. 
It's also a rather important aircraft to take for the division, as Raymer Rapana has a rather big weakness of having pretty terrible long-range anti-tank. Your ground base anti-tank is virtually non-existent for the most part, so really you have to rely on using infantry tactics, as well as the aircraft that you have in the division to try and keep those pesky T-34s at bay. And for the A-phase problem, this does it pretty well. I highly recommend taking this in pretty much all your Reimer upon at decks. It's pretty much a no-brainer, as you do want some sort of cheap anti-tank. You can get three of these out in A-phase, which is pretty efficient. And yeah, you can blow up tanks pretty efficiently. I do recommend when you do use them, you use them in pairs of two, as usually two striking at the same target will be enough to blow up the majority of light and medium tanks that you're going to be coming across in a phase yeah it's it's a very good aircraft all things considered it's not super fancy or great but it's cheap and it gets the job done and well i'm gonna leave it off yeah this has been another ring unit of the week i hope you guys enjoyed the video and as usual please just take it easy